Hi everyone, my name is John McDonald and welcome to our Friday little extra video that we've been doing which has actually been really good fun. So last week we showed you how to wire a pine cone and we asked you for your favourite flower, fa uh, flower hacks. So this was the ways to make things work when you're in a pinch and we said we would do our top 10 and uh, we asked you to put your comments below. So we've got a little range of ones and I think some of them are really interesting. So. Let's start. And these are in no particular order, so um, you just take what you can. So some of them might be useful for you, some of them might not. Some you can tuck up your sleeve and then use at a later date. So our first one then is when you're making based funeral items, um, sometimes the actual flowers can be really weak in the neck and they'll snap. And then you find that, yes, you had enough croissants if they were in good condition, but they're not. And they start to snap. So one trick is really just to wire these flowers, so up the stem, into the head. You can use them underneath where the placement would be, or you can use them in areas which are less visible. And actually, once they're in and they're with the other flowers and you've sprayed them, they're going to be fine and they'll be fine for a funeral. So if you find that you're a little bit tight on your croissants, you don't have any spare, don't throw away the broken ones, you can still use them. So that was number one. Our next one is, if you're working in a shop environment, people obviously have a choice of options for what they want to buy, and generally colours are quite important. Now, sod's law, someone wants a yellow bokeh, and you don't have a lot of yellow flowers. So what you need to do is you need to identify your yellow flowers, or whatever colour it is they want, and then think about colours that tone with that. So instead of just doing purely yellow, you can do yellow and cream towards white. Your next point is that you could then basically add packaging that enhances that colour. So you thought you didn't have a lot of yellow flowers, but actually you've created a blended yellow bokeh that's enhanced by the packaging that you're using. So this one I wouldn't call a hack, I would just call it a tip, is adding flower food to water before you soak your foam. This is a good idea for wedding work and uh, if you're using like the bridal holders, then that's something that you can easily do for making sure that your bridal bouquet lasts longer on the day than just using normal water. The next point, again, could be a tip rather than a hack, but only soak the foam that you need. It's so easy to throw a block in the sink or a whole load of blocks in the sink, and then you find that actually you're left with two and a half blocks or bits of blocks. The reality is, get your dish, cut the piece that you need, and only soak that. Then you're not left with a load of stuff that's wet and uh, hanging around and you're only using it as you need it. So the next one then, back to the colour option, was sometimes it's necessary to add a little bit of spray colour. So very specific colours like blue can be really a little bit of a problem. Now I find that if you overdo it then it really stands out like a sore thumb. So subtle and simple is actually a good way. So say you were needing blue and yellow is with say like a Santini croissant is just do a light blue uh, and then maybe one or two carnations do a dark blue and that's a way of bringing in a colour that you don't have. So the, like the Oasis flower sprays are excellent on flowers but start gently and stop at a certain point. If you go really dark then maybe it, it starts to look fake and then obviously blend that in with other materials. Okay, sometimes you don't have the flowers you need, like maybe you need an orchid for a corsage. Well, maybe you have an orchid plant and you can use the plant for the actual flower. Uh, this is actually a really good technique and if you've got a good range of plants then you can use them for foliage and flowers as needed and they're a good stand-in, they're a good backup. And with regard to some wedding work then actually they can allow you to do something that you might not have been able to buy, so like very small orchid heads for wedding work could look stunning. Use silk flowers. So imagine you're um, a bit short of flowers and you're doing a funeral spray. There's no reason why you couldn't maybe use some silk hydrangea deep within it to give it body uh, and then add your fresh flowers. Again, these are right if you're in a pinch and if you're stuck. Uh, but it is an option to use a little bit of silk just to get you through. Another point as well is 
if you're in a shop and your shop's particularly quiet and you don't want to buy a huge amount of flowers, then actually it's worth investing in some artificial flowers for your shop display. So you can put them towards the back or you can have them throughout the display. But that really gives you volume into a display without you having materials sitting there that aren't going to be used and will go off. So this is a good tip if you're in a quiet period and you're thinking the shop's looking a bit bare, is bring out the silks, buy some silks. You can still sell those silks, but it will give you a much more impactful display, which is worth doing. So, we talked about using plants that you might have in the shop, but it's potential that you could actually nip to the supermarket and buy a bunch of flowers or buy a plant. Uh, so maybe you need to do a planted order for someone. Generally, wholesale, you're having to buy trays of six or eight or ten plants. If you've got few and far between orders for plants, then sometimes it's worth just going, buying a few simple plants from the supermarket and then creating your own design with them. If you think of the supermarket as really being a, another type of wholesaler, that's a good way to look at it. Because they buy in such volume, their prices are so keen that actually they sometimes match the, super, uh, the wholesalers anyway. So it's not, not a bad idea. And for that corsage that needed two pink roses, maybe it's worth just buying a little bunch of 10 pink roses rather than big-headed, long-stemmed ones from the wholesaler. It can make sense. So remember, you don't need to be stuck in a, in a sticky pot with that. You can actually just go and have a look. So, uh, sometimes plants aren't available. So imagine you've got a wedding and they really want a herby look and they're wanting little terracotta pots of rosemary and different herbs on the table. Again, you can actually use the cut version rather than trying to find the plant. So if the plant isn't available on your wholesaler list, uh, but the cut version is, then think about using floral foam and just adding those materials into it to look like a plant. And that's ideal for events, actually. You can then use the cut ones into the cut elements and as the planted element as well. But again, if you can get the planted one, that's better. So, um, reviving flowers. Flowers can be a little bit tricky, especially things like hydrangea. And what I like to do is, if you've got, say, a rose or a hydrangea that's wilting, is cut a couple of inches off the bottom on a slant and float it in a deep basin of water. Um, this is a really good way for bringing them back to life. Just nice, cold, deep water. You could even put a little something on top of it just to weight it down so that it's basically submerged. Now this actually ties in with one of the comments that we got, um, which was for specifically hydrangeas. So, alum powder. This isn't something I've actually used, but apparently you can get it online and it is very cheap. Uh, but the suggestion from Angela Bailey was to place the flower heads upside down in deep water and let them have a good few hours in there. And then afterwards, cut them and dip them in the alum, and that makes them drink. And then she says that the flowers will go rock hard and they should last for two or three weeks. So I must admit, I think I would be very tempted to try that. And that was something that we used to do when we had the business, uh, the retail business, was every now and again, you'd get product in and you'd, you're thinking, is this good, is this bad? The best idea is to try it out. So if you've got a flower food, then put a vase with no flower food, put a vase with flower food, put the vase with the new one that you're wanting to try. And you can actually do like a little experiment in your own environment and make your own judgment as to whether it's a good tip or not. So on your suggestions then, this was a good one, was basically using hedgerow greenery. So obviously that depends if you've got access to things, but if you've got access to conifer, uh, ivy, especially trailing ivy for weddings, buried ivy, these things can really save you a bit of money, can add a lot of volume to event work or to work in general, and allow you to concentrate on the flowers that you're actually going to use as well, um, and not worry so much about the foliage. Uh, so it can make you look like you're giving more, but actually you're just putting the value onto the flowers, you've already got the greenery. But remember, you will have the time of having to go and get it and condition it. So, Diane Quillette 
uh, also suggested when you're using Dusty Miller, now I had to look up what Dusty Miller was, it's the Senecio uh, Cineraria. It's that kind of silver, frondy, uh, serrated edged leaf uh, plant that you can buy. You can buy it as a cut foliage, you see it in gardens, in some countries it's just used as like summer bedding, in more milder areas it will actually go through the winter. It's a beautiful foliage and her suggestion was use matte white spray paint on Dusty Miller when some of its felt is damaged and that'll just mask the fact that there's a little bit of damage on it. So good point there and it is always a good thing to have a few tins of spray paint in a variety of colours just up your sleeve just in case. And our final suggestion then was fake anemones. Yes, fake anemones. Uh, if you're doing wedding work and the bride is very specific that she wants anemones then this hack is a really good way of creating an anemone out of lisianthus and like a kermit croissant, so like the little button croissants. Take your little button croissant, spray it black or dark dark brown and then take off the head and cold glue it inside your lisianthus. Now we'll add a photo that you can see an example and I must admit I think it's a really good trick uh, to create that look for a wedding. Obviously, as a cut flower, it's not going to work, but as a, a, an event flower or a wedding flower, then it's a really good way of making a flower out of two different flowers. So thank you for your, all your suggestions. If you've got more suggestions, then please add them below in the comments, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again for our design video on Tuesday, and we'll come up with another little bonus video for Friday next week. So, Take care everyone, stay safe and uh, enjoy the flowers.